Hello and welcome to From the South. We start off in Argentina, where 179,000 workers have lost their jobs since Conservative President Mauricio Macri took office last December. This is according to the latest data from Argentina's Center for Political Economy, known as CIPA. Workers have marched on numerous occasions against the private and public sector layoffs and the Macri government. Paraguayan President Horacio Cartes met with Israeli President Ruven Rivlin on Monday during a two-day visit to the region. Under Cartes, Paraguay has been one of Israel's biggest allies in Latin America. They reopened embassies and Paraguay has supported Israel in international forums. Here in the working-class Mexico City neighborhood of Iztapalapa, residents find it hard to pay their basic bills, especially now that gas and electricity prices are increasing. Costs are horrible. My daughter only makes minimum wage, and she has to care for three children and for me. Earlier this month, authorities announced that electricity prices would increase up to 8 percent. For the residents of Iztapalapa who make minimum wage, roughly $4 a day, there is no other option than to resist. For those of us who can't pay, we have to find a way to protest. The truth is that we will not be paying. <laughs> In 2013, Mexico's President Enrique Peña Nieto passed the neoliberal energy reform, opening the sector to privatization that for more than seven decades was publicly owned. Peña Nieto made the promise that the reform would translate into benefits for the population. Mexican families receive bills that have been more expensive in the recent years, with the energy reform I'm going to lower the cost of electricity. Analysts do say that there was a decline in costs after the approval of the reform, but that it had no direct correlation with the reform's policies being put into practice, but rather was part of a PR stint to gain further approval of the reform. The topic of energy is very serious because of the reduction in electricity costs that occurred last year, mainly in the domestic sector, was basically due to a decree so as to make the implementation of the energy reform more acceptable. In the end, critics argue that the reform only opens Mexico up to further energy dependence on foreign companies, who are the ones that benefit from the policies and not the Mexican population as a whole. Clayton Canta del Sur, Mexico City. Venezuela reopened its border with Colombia for a second time this month on Sunday to allow people to shop there for basic foods and medicines. However, many Venezuelans reported the returned home empty-handed or with only a few products after finding the prices of goods to be prohibitively expensive. Now on to world news. According to state media, former Turkish Air Force Chief Akin Osturk confessed to planning the failed military coup. However, two private broadcasters said the general had denied playing a role. Over 6,000 people in the armed forces and judiciary have been arrested so far. Police have tightened security in Cleveland, where Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump will be confirmed as the nominee. Police requested Ohio's governor to suspend open carry gun rights during the Republican National Convention. However, the governor said he does not have the power to suspend the law. According to Paris prosecutor Francois Moline, the man who killed 84 people in Nice, France, had planned his attack in the days prior to Bastille Day. Moline added that he had recently developed an interest in radical Islam. Two suicide bombers tried to ram vehicles laden with explosive through two Yemeni military checkpoints near the government-held port city of Mukalla. At least 11 people were killed and 18 more injured in the attack. More than 18,000 scientists, campaigners and donors opened a major AIDS conference in South Africa. The biannual summit returns to Africa after 16 years. Although progress against the disease has been made, UN General Secretary Ban Ki-moon warned that urgent action was needed to avoid progress being lost. The Palestinian popular struggle fronting in the Gaza Strip held a march and festival marking the 49th anniversary of its founding on Monday. PPSF is a Palestinian political party that was led by Dr. Samir Gausha until his death in 2009. Despite holding a seat in the Executive Council in the Palestinian Liberation Organization, the group is generally considered to have a limited influence over Palestinian politics. During the events, dozens of supporters gathered in front of the Prisoners' Families Association and headed toward the office of the International Committee of the Red Cross in Western Gaza City. They were joined by relatives of Palestinian detainees, journalists and human rights activists. They expressed their solidarity with all Palestinian prisoners in the Israeli jails. Participants raised Palestinian flags as well as the photos and posters of their imprisoned loved ones. 
On Sunday, Israeli authorities cancelled a weekly visit for the relatives of three prisoners from the Gaza Strip held at the Nafha prison. On the 49th founding anniversary of the Popular Struggle Front, we say that committing to the rights of our people is key for maintaining our right of return and the establishment of the Palestinian independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. We will never accept any temporary borders or interim solutions. We stress the importance of enduring political division in order to restore the prestige of our national project. The relatives of many prisoners are often denied permission to visit their loved ones without any explanation from Israeli authorities. According to the Prisoners and ex detainees Association, Hussam, about 350 Palestinians from the Gaza Strip are being held in Israeli jails, a minority of whom are allowed family visits every Monday. Nuharazin Tirsu TV, Gaza. According to the World Anti-Doping Agency's independent report, Russia operated a state-dictated doping system during the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics and other events. Due to this report, it is likely to lead to demands for Russia to be completely banned from the Rio Games. Thank you for joining us. More on these and other stories on our website, telesorttv.net slash English.